Hi everyone, Dennis Foley from Acoustic Fields. Today we're going to talk about worm sign. What's a barrier? Barrier is a structure or a shell. Think of a turtle shell. It's something we build between a noise source and us. So in rooms, we call it the shell. Remember, there's three walls in a room. There's the shell for noise. There's the climate control wall, BTU retention, hot and cold. And then there's the treatment wall. So we have three walls inside of our critical listening rooms. Noise transmission is airborne energy. That what, what does it do then? It strikes our walls, right? Our shell. When it does that, it turns into a whole different science. It turns into vibrational acoustics. And this is where people have difficulty because they use the same approach that they use for airborne energy, molecular velocity, on noise, and it won't work. You can't sound absorb your way out of noise. You have to build barriers. Barriers are vibrational acoustics. Noise has a frequency response, just like a room. It has lows, has mids, has highs. It's the same kind of creature we're always dealing with except this one we don't want to hear. Most of the other ones we do, right? So it's frequency and amplitude dependent, always the design that we use for a barrier. That's why we insist you measure the noise because words like, well, it's not too loud, it's a quiet neighborhood, none of that means anything. You have to assign numbers to that subjectivity. So we have an objective way to deal with things, right? because the barrier we're going to build is frequency and amplitude dependent on the noise. We wouldn't use a half inch sheet of plywood to stop a garbage truck. Even though some of you think you can do that, you can't. It's not frequency and amplitude dependent on the garbage truck noise, which is around 40 cycles. How is a half inch piece of plywood or any material type? going to stop a 28 foot long wave. You got to start thinking like that. So our airborne energy has a frequency response. There's our typical frequency response we see in rooms, right? High on the low end, dips down in the middle and comes back up on the other side. Well, when it strikes our wall, we go from a snake to a worm. It's the same frequency response. We just want to make it smaller. We want to reduce its amplitude. We want to reduce its strength, but it's going to be the same frequency response. It's just now vibrational acoustics. So we have to deal with it in there. Nothing is proofed with noise. You manage it. This nonsense about soundproofing, I, another perversion in the industry we'll stay away from. So we want the worm side to come in below the noise floor of the room or be part of that whole process. That's our goal. And we can design for the noise floor. It's designed for people like, well, how do you achieve a 30 dB SPL noise floor in your room? You design for it. It's not magic. It doesn't happen by sprinkling fairy dust. You have to analyze the numbers. More importantly, you have to have a lot of experience do, doing this. And I think this is another area where most people fail. We have years and years of experience. I was a real estate developer for 20 years. Our rooms were leased because they were quiet. Well, how do you think I got them quiet? I learned all of this. And we've applied it to room acoustics. Sound is sound, noise is pretty much noise. So the numbers are the same. So you design for the noise floor. Noise transmission is vibration transmission. Snake to a worm. We wanna create a barrier here that has multiple layers. So when the snake gets to the first layer, second layer, third layer, by the time it comes out the other side, it's a worm. Well, slow its rear end down, so to speak. I'm gonna say ass, but let's say rear end. So you're gonna slow it down, right? So the worm has the same frequency. Oh, this is cheap chalk. We can't make good chalk. We're America. We can't make decent chalk that works for a blackboard. Come on. So anyway, worm, same frequency response, just smaller. We're going to not proof it. We're going to manage it. So 
we're going to use the ability to decrease its amplitude or strength to create a low noise floor. And that's management. And if you're going to manage anything, you got to have numbers. So worm sign, we're going from a snake to a worm. It's vibrational acoustics, this noise stuff. So start to change the way you think about things. Sound absorption is not a barrier technology. Hope this helps. Thank you. Thank you for watching this video. And if you liked it, please give us a thumbs up. We also have a newsletter that you can subscribe to. So please do that because we offer special price discounts to only those on our newsletter. And then don't forget about our forum. We have started a forum on our own website where people ask questions and I usually get a chance every couple of days to look at it. There's an interchange between people on the forum and we'll give you real answers uh, on a regular basis. So that'll help you. Thank you.